yeah. Steve Gurney here. In the years of being a professional athlete, 20 years of them, I did a lot of research and I still do now. I found that the difference between those who succeed in, in not just races, but in all walks of life, usually is something that they do in their head. And there's a great lesson I got from my wise old mentor, Graham Felton. I used to call him Yoda, actually, is his nickname, because he was short, wise, and wrinkly. And it's that wisdom I learned so much about. Uh, and, and it's supported, too, by the field of NLP, which I studied in uh, a lot as well. And it's basically, what do we do in a head that's different? And I'll give you a really simple example, which I'm going to expand on. So, glass of water here. You know, an optimist sees it as half full. A pessimist sees it as half empty. As a trained mechanical engineer, I see the vessel is twice as big as it really needs to be. But it's so much more than what goes on about being an optimist and a pessimist. It's about the pictures you, you make in your head. It's about the words you say to yourself. It's so much more richness. I'll give you an example. So when I was a young athlete, um, a bit arrogant and uh, super driven, and, and uh, I, I, I had a, a problem. I was really worried about this problem. I went to see Graham Felton for the first time, and he he described me later as being a, a fly that you know it was it was dying on the window, so it was spinning on his back, panicking, and I was worried about this problem. And he, there was not much he could do for me in that one session because I was too wound up. So he gave me a simple exercise, and this is like twenty five, maybe thirty years ago, and it's still very clear in my head, and it's still potently powerful, but extremely simple and that's that is why it's so effective so he said to me Steve you came in here worried about this problem you had now let's start with worry now worry let's look at that word it's a very sort of negative sort of word it's, feel, feel the weight of it on your shoulders you say I'm worried can you think of another word that kind of gives the same idea but doesn't have that same heavy feeling about it and of course, everyone's a bit different depending on, on what history they have, what memories they have, what upbringing they had. But word, another word for me was concerned. You can see I was concerned about this problem, but I wasn't worried. And worry, worry for other reasons is, is not such a good word. And then he said, well, you, Steve, let's take that next word, problem. You've got this problem. It's a knee injury. And it's a really heavy word. It was a, another word that might give you more optimism with it. And he said, mm, what about... um?" got a challenge it's not a problem it's a challenge or I've even modified that further now I say it's a hurdle it's just a hurdle I've got to go get over or around or under and you know, you've seen those hurdlers in the Olympic Games you know sometimes they accidentally catch a hurdle and it, and it knocks it over and they just keep on going you know a hurdle never stops them properly it's just something they have to get over it slows them down a little bit and they get, get around it and, and refocus on their goal and so we went through a whole list. He gave me a big list of these sorts of words. But, the, you know, I'll just give you those couple of examples. And you can use it as a competition amongst yourselves, perhaps in your workplace or at home and your family, or even just um, with yourself, reminding yourself or choosing words. When you catch yourself using a negative word, think, hmm, is there a more powerful one I can use that has more, gives more optimism? And, yeah, I just want to go further with this now and say the way we set our goals is very important the language we choose you know like I was coaching some school kids I go to quite a few high schools and one of the uh, students they wanted to be uh, a top all black of course and so we were setting some intermediate goals some goals for this year and he said I said to him you know I asked him what's what's your goal you have for this year and he said well I want to make it through the season without being injured this year and you can see there's a problem with the way he worded that and I'll call it the blue tree so I'll give you an example and then we'll go back to reword his goal to be more powerful and more, more optimistic. So I want you to listen carefully and follow my instructions, okay? So don't think about a blue tree. And don't think about a blue tree with blue branches. And don't, whatever you do, don't think about blue leaves on those blue branches. And don't think about blue flashing lights on those blue leaves on the blue branches on the blue tree. So what color are you thinking of? I know some of you say, well, I'm thinking about green, but I know how the human brain works. I know that to think about the green, you first of all had to think about the blue because that's the one I told you not to think about. It's how the, the human brain works, is that when we use the word don't in there, that is, uh, it's, it's, the, the brain can't help it. It has to think of that. So that's not useful. That sabotages your goals. So it's very important when you're, 
in the language you're using as instructions to your team, instructions to the people who are working for you, instructions to your boss, instructions to anyone. That, that word don't do this is not useful. And so how you work it uh, or replace it is you say, if I'm not doing that behavior, what am I doing instead? So if I'm not thinking about a blue tree, what do you want me to do instead? And those are the instructions you give them. So I would say, think about a green tree or think about an orange tree. And so when we say to our spouse on the phone, say, oh, darling, uh, don't forget to get the milk on the way home. You're setting them up for failure already by using that word don't. So what would you do instead? You, If they're not forgetting, what are they doing instead? So let's reword that. Remember to get the milk from the dairy on the corner with the blue roof, go through the door and the milk's on the shelf on the right and the, on, in, in the refrigerator with the red door. And remember to bring change enough to buy the milk. See, so you replace what you don't want. So let's go back to the original one, that young student who had a lofty goal of being an all black. Yes, good goal. It's audacious. It's brilliant. We need to change the way he thinks about his goals in the short term. So if he's not being injured this season, what is he being instead? Now, we'll help him choose his... It's up to him to choose the words that are most powerful for him according to his upbringing. But we might suggest things like, I want to make it through this season fit and healthy, strong, and then get selected for the provincial team. You see, so the way your word goals sets the right pictures in your mind and then your body, your unconscious, everything about your biochemistry will just set off and help, or do its best to help you achieve that goal. There you are. I set you a challenge to think about the words you use. You have to be the observer here and just notice now and then what words could be replaced with something more powerful and do it in a loving, helpful, optimistic way to yourself. Go ahead and be powerful. Get your goals.